Hello, here's another video on how I use ChessBase to manage my repertoire. My name is Sean from ImperfectChess.com, and let's dive in. So in the first video, I talked about being set up and having different databases using a reference database, a large reference database, which I have for mega database. Um, I've got a small subset of mega database, which I call intermediate version 4 which is a subset that just is grouped around folks at my level so I can compare openings and their strategies against people that are more attuned to my skill set or lack thereof and I have new games coming in that are not yet part of Mega Database that are recent so this was I just happened to call it Mega Recent 26 and it's got 147,000 games and over here of course I have my database which is my repertoire which I've been slowly building in this case this is a little one I've been building and you can see the metal I added in the last uh, video we put together now what's really important for this exercise today is we want to make sure that this database is marked as your repertoire database that means something special and I'll show you what that means so we have that checked off that's good and now there's a couple of things we can do when we have new games coming in and we want to see whether or not any of them impact the work that we're doing in our repertoire. So if you're an intuitive person and you don't like to read the manual, one of the most obvious things you might do is just click on your new database and sort it by ECO. And then you can zip down until you get to roughly uh, the ECO that you're looking for. I wouldn't recommend this way. Um, I, I don't really do it this often, but it just shows. Uh, I want to show how you can, uh, in, a, in a sort of quick and dirty, pull up a uh, the 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 games that are available there, and just quickly see what's there. If, if that's if you, that's what you're doing in this large one, uh, there are better ways to handle that. But that's the first thing that we can do. Now, secondly, what we can do is go into our highlight our database rather than sorting it and looking for specific things what we can do is zip over here into the reports and we can generate a report and what the report will do is compare this database to whatever we've checked off as our repertoire database so I'm going to click generate report here and what it's doing is going through every single game and looking for those games that match my repertoire. Now, the details of how it matches your repertoire is really based on you within your games, your repertoire. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's just let this finish off. It's done a scan, and boom, we've got this uh, text report. It looks blank right away. And uh, yes, I get a heart attack first time that happens, and I remember I need to do this, and then poof, it appears. So, this looks familiar. Now we have up here. Um, all of the games and a little reminder of how this works and here's my first line nice defense if I jump back over here get into chess space go over here here's my first line and you know QF3 Queen F3 and there it is Queen F3 and look at that 66 games and there they are all played and if I want I can even click on this and I'll get the games lined up there and they're ready for me to go in and dive and start fooling around with. If you scroll down, you can even um, see one for each line. Now down here, I've just started building up uh, a little fun thing on the Evans. It's not very far. You can see three moves and uh, some cool names. Look at that. Carlson, Anand, Rael Pons. Um, some cool stuff. So. You know, I want to dive in there and see what these guys have done. I can just, if I want, I can click on this Carlson game where he won his black. And, um, well, he seemed to do that pretty quickly, too. So there's an opportunity for me to take a look. And we talked before about if I have this and maybe I want to add this to my repertoire, I could always uh, just go here and I can add it to my repertoire. Bang, and it'll go right into the, into the I'm going to do this here. Boom, let's take a look what this looks like. And I can save it as a new game, or I can merge it. So this would be a new line in the database, or I can merge it with my Evans Gambit. Let's just go ahead and merge it with the Evans Gambit. Go down here and pop over here. And inside my Evans Gambit now, I probably have a mag. There's, there's the game here. 
and you can see what Magnuson done is he's, he's uh, what uh, Carlson did, or excuse me, what White did is they got a different move than I did uh, at the fourth level. Now, in fact, I haven't really looked at this, and I don't know if I want to do that, so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to delete this variation. But that's how that might work. Now, I'm not going to say that. The way the uh, generate repertoire works is it looks for key positions, and I mentioned this in the last video. This is the one key position of this line, which I manually marked by right-clicking and um, special annotation, critical opening position. So any game in that new database that has this position here, it's going to fall underneath that group of games. So those 66 games that fell there because they had this position. Even if they arrived at a different route and they ended up there, that's what the key is. So each one of these is looking for the key position. So here I've got 32 games for the 5 black knight d4. And if I come back over here and open this up, knight d4, and you can see there's the critical position. And that's what was used to drive all of these games. One other thing I want to show you before I take off, because I think it's kind of cool and I never really use it, uh, but I, I like it. If you have, um, if I jump back over here and let's take a look and say we're opening and looking at this game, which is a very short game, made in nine, uh, and we're looking here and maybe, maybe we didn't get here from our um, from the, the route I just showed with running a repertoire. Maybe we tripped across this game and we're looking at it and we, th we think this this kind of looks familiar. I think I have a repertoire line like this. And I don't want to go all the way out and pull up my repertoire and bring it back. I can do a quick search on my repertoire right from here. And what this is is a control alt shift F. And over here it pops up and sure enough, yes, this uh, position that I've just picked does show up in a repertoire and there it is there and I can open this up and actually take a look at my repertoire and go oh yeah this is all oh, right right I got it um, and then you can restore game and go back to the game you're looking at so I think that's kinda cool too and it's it's not something I use enough uh, I always forget that I use it I always m manage to go back and look for my repertoire game but there's a couple of more things um, cool things that you can do with respect to building a repertoire and then following up and maintaining it afterwards and I hope you found that cool. Uh, check out my website at imperfectchess.com. And uh, thanks for listening. Cheers.